Hey guys, welcome back to my Absolute Beginner's Guide to Kerbal Space Program. This is part two. I'm going to show you in this one uh, some of the basics of basically just taking off and getting into a circular orbit around the planet Kerbin. This is the exact same spacecraft that I made in the previous video. So we're just going to go over here and click the launch button and wait for it to load up. Okay, now we're on the uh, main screen of the game pretty much. This is the uh, launch screen, the launch and staging screen I guess you would say. Uh, this up here is, I'm just going to show you some of the basics first before we launch. This is the uh, time warp indication uh, thingamajigger here. So if you hit the comma and, sp and period buttons it'll increase and decrease the time warp. You can basically use any time warp while you're actually on the surface of a planet or a moon, but um, after that it's going to let you do certain amounts of time warp based on how high your altitude is. If you're really high up it's going to let you do pretty much any time warp that you want. If you're low down it's going to limit you and it'll tell you that if you try to go beyond what the actual um, allowance is for time warp. And then it'll also show you up here mission elapsed time, so that's going to be the time since you actually launched when you hit the space water launch it'll start counting down on that timer we've got the staging here which is pretty much the same as what we saw in the VAB it's going to show you down here what stage you're currently on so we're currently on stage two which is the just the uh, rocket uh, motor firing it's going to show you what your roll your yaw and your pitch are I'm not going to do that because I might actually end up tilting the rocket over but we'll see that in effect when we start to launch actually the ASAS that's over here will uh, be using that on its own. We've got docking mode over here which is a new addition. If you use this it will change your WSAD and Q and E to go from a rotation to uh, translation. Uh, that's going to be something that I will show you in an upcoming video where I show um, uh, like a, a rendezvous between, I'll, I'm going to make a space station and we'll, we'll rendezvous some parts up in orbit and that's going to be pretty key to doing that. Uh, the third one is the orbit map which you can get to either by clicking down there on that third button or by hitting the M button and M will toggle back and forth between that. You can see that we're on the surface of Kerbin here. If you zoom out with the mouse wheel you can see that there's the Moon, there's Minmus, we can zoom out a little bit more we'll see our orbit, there's Eve, there's uh, Moho, there's new, one of the new planets, Drez, there's Duna. You go out further, there's uh, Jewel, which has a ton of moons. And then way out here in this sort of tilted, weird orbit is Elu. Hit M to go back, and we're going to hit uh, T, which is going to bring up the SAS. So that's actually going to keep the rocket on the same heading down here as when I hit the T button. So we've got heading, which is shown by these um, lines going out in kind of a starburst pattern from the middle of the screen, or from the middle of the nav ball. So we've got uh, 0 or 360 degrees is going to be pointing north, and then 90 degrees is east, 270 is west, and 180 is south. Uh, G-force is going to show how much acceleration you're undergoing right now. Throttle is pretty self-explanatory. Up is more throttle, down is less throttle. So it'll tell you your current heading down here, your surface velocity, which is a 0.2 right now because we're kind of wobbling around. But if you click on that, it'll also show you your orbit, orbital velocity, rather. Uh, this is going to show you if RCS is on, but we're going to go over that in the uh, in the rendezvous. RCS is kind of a like really small rocket motors almost that use gas that can help you translate instead of rotate and and do all sorts of fine maneuvers. Then we've got the atmosphere meter up here. This is going to be more atmosphere down to less atmosphere. Vertical speed is zero right now. And then this is our current altitude above sea level. If you hit C, it'll also show you down here on the radar altitude what your altitude of the actual surface is. So that's going to be different depending on uh, how many mountains and valleys and stuff that there are. And not all the pods actually have that radar altimeter. Like the, for some reason, I think the um, the lander can doesn't have it, which is kind of weird. But uh, this basic pod and also the uh, three person, the three carbon pod has a radar altimeter, which is going to be kind of useful when you're doing like a moon landing or you know landing on a surface. 
So what I'm going to do is hit shift and that will bring our, our throttle all the way up. Control will bring it down. Hit shift, bring it all the way up to 100 and we're going to hit space and it's going to use our up our first stage which is the uh, engine that we've got mounted here at the bottom. I'm going to zoom out a little bit using the mouse wheel. And there we go, we have a lift off. We can see that the mission elapsed timer is going up right now. Our surface velocity is increasing pretty quickly. Our altitude is increasing pretty quickly. Bob is mildly terrified. And what I'm going to show you here, this is the reason, zoom in a little bit, this is the reason that we saw a difference in surface velocity versus orbital velocity. You can see that we have kind of a arcing parabolic path here. It's because the fact that we're, that Kerbin is rotating from west to east is actually giving us some orbital velocity, about 175 meters per second of orbital velocity. So that's why there's a difference between what our surface velocity is and when we click we'll see that we have a different orbital velocity. That's helpful because usually when you're going to get into an orbit you're going to want to go in an orbit that's rotating from uh, west to east because of the area. that's less energy that you have to actually put into the orbit. Sometimes you need to do an east to west orbit or north to south or south to north orbit but the vast majority of the time you're just going to want to launch with the direction of the planet. Right now we're going straight up to kind of get past the thickness of the atmosphere. We want to put as little work into pushing past the atmosphere as we can. So we're going straight up right now. When we hit about here, which is about 13,000 feet, uh, that's when we're going to start our gravity turn, which is basically using gravity to help kind of tilt the, the, the path of the rocket over so that you're not using up uh, rocket power. So we're almost getting there. We're going to hit unhit T. We're going to hit T to undo the uh, SAS control and hit D to tilt over to the right. And we're going to just wait until we're at about a 45 degree pitch here. And then we're going to, I guess it's rolling a little bit, but then we're going to hit T again to keep that exact pitch and heading. And you can see that we're kind of curving over and that's increasing our... Um, apoapsis, which is the highest point in the orbit, and our, and how fast that we're going laterally. So we're going to wait until this gets to be about, uh, let's say 75,000 feet, and then we're going to hit X to stop it from going up. There we go. You can see it's going down a little bit. That's because we're still in the atmosphere. It's killing off some of our velocity. But, um, let's see, what, not see, what am I doing here? Hit M. And we're kind of just floating through space right now. Um, as soon as we are out of the atmosphere, which is going to be at about 70,000 feet, uh, it's going to start playing music. That's kind of an indicator that you're out of the atmosphere, but this will also show you if you're out of the atmosphere or not. Uh, we're gonna hit T again and sort of go over to a zero degree pitch, which is right on this line between the brown and the blue. That's gonna be where we're gonna want to go when we're doing our burn. Uh, we can also, s I'm not gonna set up a maneuver node right now. I will show. There's a system where you can actually plan out and show exactly how much throttle you have to give to do a burn. I'm going to show you that in the next video. But for now, we can actually just kind of do it manually. You can see that the music just started playing to say that we're out of the atmosphere. Whale music. Whales are pretty indicative of being in space. Anybody that knows anything about space knows that it has a lot to do with whales. Humpback whales specifically. It's crazy. Lots of whales in space. So we can see that our orbit uh, stopped at about 75,795 meters. As soon as we get to that point, which is going to be in 765, we're going to do, we're going to throttle up to do our circularization burn. And you can see that it's kind of bending out the sides of the orbit. just going to want to keep burning. Maybe that should burn a little bit late, but we're going to keep burning until this path pretty much just goes around the entire planet and the two ends meet up in a circle. And 
it's going to be a circular orbit as long as that orbit is above 70,000 meters. It's just going to keep going and going and going and going. So it's about to do that, and I'm actually going to stop it right there, where you kind of have these opposite each other at a, like 90 degrees from the apoapsis, or where the apoapsis was where you are right now. So you got 67,000 there and 83,000 on that side. That's not the greatest because it's dipping below the atmosphere in a little bit. So I'm going to actually, whoops, I went the wrong way. I'm going to tilt this up at about, I don't know, let's say 15 degree angle. Hit T again to keep going in the same direction. And then I'm going to, if I bring up the map view and I hit that, it's going to let me do a burn by hitting shift while I'm in the map view. And you can see that's increasing my apoapsis. So now it's above 70,000 feet. That means we're entirely out of the atmosphere and we're just going to keep going in a circular path. That's not entirely circular, but you can see that's pretty darn close to being a circular orbit. If you have um, the MechJet mod, it'll actually, it's actually a lot easier to get into a circular orbit. You can just be at any point in the orbit and say, I want to circularize it and it'll just make the exact correct burn to make it circular, but you can kind of guesstimate it like I just did there too. Um, I'm not even going to let it keep orbiting. What I'm going to do is, uh, oops, hit the wrong button again. You can see um, this little icon here is going to show what direction your current velocity is. It's called the prograde indicator, and if you turn around the opposite direction, it's going to show your retrograde indicator which is the uh, opposite direction as what you're traveling so what I'm gonna do right now is burn in the retrograde direction and that's gonna kind of decay my orbit and help Bob here get back to the planet Kerbin he looks like he's missing Kerbin right now he's kind of terrified we're gonna hit T stay exactly on that heading and then do a burn use up the rest of this fuel down here And the engine, if you right click on the engine, you can see that it just flamed out because it was deprived of liquid fuel. So you can see on the map view that now our path isn't circular anymore. It's going to crash into the planet curb in there. So we're going to hit spacebar. And that just used up stage number one, which was that decoupler that we put on there in the last episode. And now our spacecraft only consists of the pod and the parachute and you can see the music just stopped because we are back in the atmosphere and I'm actually going to time accelerate by hitting the period button and it's going to do physical time acceleration which is this red time acceleration uh, that's because we are in atmosphere you can't um, do anything but physical time acceleration when you're in the atmosphere physical time acceleration means that you can still move everything around it's just simulating the physics faster um, normal time acceleration completely pauses your spacecraft, you can't do anything to it, it's just going to stay in whatever state, it cancels out any rotation that it has, and you're, it's just going to pretty much warp time forward. So we're falling, 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 we're about halfway through the atmosphere right now, so I'm going to take down the time acceleration and hit spacebar to deploy the parachute, you can see the parachute changed color down there, it's not fully deployed yet, you can see it's obviously not doing anything. But in just a second, it's going to actually pop out like that. And that's a drug shoot. That's just going to keep our our spacecraft kind of, actually kind of an aircraft right now, kind of stable so that it's only going in the direction uh, that we're actually traveling. And then I'm going to time accelerate forward. At about 500 meters, it's actually going to fully deploy the parachute to slow us down take off SAS. We really don't need it anymore. We don't really have SAS on anymore. And we've got it going down, down, down. And we're going to turn that off. And there we go. We've got a full parachute. We're descending at about 6.3 meters per second. And it's time accelerate to hit the ocean. You see the moon on the horizon there. And that's the end of the mission. 
Uh, next time I'm going to go over a little bit more advanced orbital maneuvers uh, and possibly show you guys how to do um, action groups in the Navy. Thanks for watching. Bye.